Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, hi, Tyson. Hey, Salima. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My iPhone. I don't know who the iPhone is. Just type your name. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And if you're on your iPhone, can you type your name in the chat for attendance? Just because I want to make sure I get your name. And it's not showing up for some reason. Erin, good morning. So welcome to English 2. Happy Thursday. Oh, Nasir, hi. Nice to see you. I haven't seen you in a little bit. Um, so we're going to start off with a community meeting, just doing a few like would you rathers. Um, and you could type this in the chat too. Erin says I'm working. Okay. So yeah, if you are working, um, you guys can talk and listen and, um, we'll go over what you need to do work-wise. Okay. Um, all right. So the first, would you rather, um, would you rather lose your ability to speak or have to say everything you are thinking? And you could put it in the chat. So would you rather not be able to talk or just say everything? All right, Salam says, every, say everything. I think you would have to come up with like, if you said everything you thought, I feel like you would have to come up with a really good way to, um, to like not get into fights with everybody, right? Um, Salima says, lose your ability to speak. I think, I don't know. I think I'm going to say ability to speak. Say everything you're thinking just sounds like, I don't know, it sounds hard, I think. This <laughs> Kenaya, Kenaya hates it. Um, but you'd lose the ability to speak. Okay. Um, hi, Shirley Ann. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. All right. Um, would you rather not use your phone for a month or not eat junk food and snacks for a month? And junk food includes chips. I knew everybody would pick not the phone. I guess we all are doing no junk food. Um, do you guys eat a lot of junk food or not really? Or you just like mostly make yourself meals?
yeah, I, I don't really eat. It's been, how, have you guys been cooking for yourself during quarantine? Like cooking mostly all your meals or do you go out for the most part? Cook them both. Oh yeah, the moms too. Definitely moms have to try to cook every day because of kid because of your kids. Um, sorry, I had to leave. The screen was black and I couldn't. Okay. Has anyone tried any good new recipes during this time? Like trying to, like you get really bored and you just want to cook something. or even baking something too, right? Like some people really like to bake more than they like to cook. Um, I know I know some people that just kind of, if they're bored, they like to bake and find a new recipe for something. I'm trying to think of something that I made during quarantine. Um, what did I make? I've just been making like, today I'm gonna try for the first time peppermint cheesecake to make it. Oh, that sounds good. It's kind of like a Christmassy thing. I really wanna make cheesecake, just a plain one or like a flavored cheesecake. I've just been making a lot of um, vegetables and curries and beans and things like that. Um, a lot of like salmon and fish. Um, I don't eat meat, so it's a little bit harder to make like things that are super filling, but I make a lot of tofu. Um, I haven't been making a lot of pasta, which is interesting because I love pasta, but um, yeah, at this point in quarantine, I'm kind of like overcooking right now. I've been eating out way too much. Um, okay, so we are going to transfer into, um, into our reading for today. Um, did anybody get their progress reports from their mentors yesterday? Did you guys kind of have that conversation with your mentor about where you're at in your classes and everything? or even just see your grades for term, like the first term. I know my mentees, we talked about it. Um, I was just wondering if in other classes that happened, just so that everybody knows where they're at grade wise. Okay, cool. So most people saw their grades and they're kind of good with where they're at. Okay, great. Um, just an announcement before we start, because we usually do community meeting announcement agenda. Um, tomorrow we are having a graduation celebration for all of the older, like the first term graduates. So you will get a link tonight to that Zoom. It's at, um, it's at 11.30 tomorrow. So you'll get a link to that and it's kind of a whole school graduation celebration. And we're trying to make it special for people who graduated because they haven't had any in-person celebration. So we're trying to make a little, you know, cute little online thing for them. And that kind of is really disappointing. Imagine being a senior and you don't get a graduation. Um, but that's what happened with quarantine. Hi, Fabian. Good morning. We had about six graduates last term. So we're going to try to celebrate them. So everybody 
will come and we're going to take attendance as like a whole school assembly. How many of you are seniors in here? I know, I know um, Nasir is. But I think if you thought about it, like, to me, it's kind of just seems unfair that you work all that way and then you're a senior, then it's like, oh yeah, you graduated. There was no, there was no celebration, right? It's just kind of like, bye. Like, it's weird because there's some seniors that, um, that teachers like won't see, right? Kira, hold on, I just got your message in. Uh, yes, we can. Good morning, Desiree. We can do that. All right, so we're gonna transition into um, reading our Persepolis book. Today, I would like to read um, the section, Finish the Veil and the next section, which was um, the section right after it. So we're gonna try to read two sections today because last class we didn't really get to read that much. We did a little bit, but we were doing a lot of other things. So I'd like to catch up with some of that content. Would anybody like to, well, first let's get the actual text up. So find your text, summit, with the book journal. So I'm going to go to summit. And if you still need help with this, you can follow along with me. Go to year on the side. English 2 and it's world literature. And remember the, um, the book is under announcements. So you could get that up separately. And then English 2, we do checkpoint 1. Persepolis book journal, and it should look like this. The veil and the bicycle. That's what I wanted to get done today. So at this point, we've really done the intro questions, and then some of you did a few of the veil questions. And in the chat, can you just write here whenever you have both of those things up? And I'll wait for people to get them up. Trillian has it up. Okay, awesome. Waiting for other peeps. And we ended right over. We're on page eight. That's where we ended last time. All right, so I have two people there in the chat. 
Anybody else? So you can find the book under, if you go to Summit on the main page under announcements, it will be this link. You could click the little loudspeaker or you can go to the main page and it will be there. Cool. Everybody else there? I'm going to take a minute to just take attendance for people that we have in here. Great. Okay. All right. So who can remember um, what happened? I'm putting it in the, ch in the chat. What happened last time we read Persepolis? In your own words. Like what can you remember at all? What did we learn about the main character and her family? And you could put this in the chat or you can speak it out loud. I put one of mine in the chat. Right, so, um, so I said they were going through protest and her mom was, um, was part of the protest, right? She was really rebellious. And then Salam said she was on the front line and uncovered. So we have a main character who is coming from a family of revolutionaries and being involved in saying that they don't want things to be the way that they are right now. And if you remember, we're in the middle of the Islamic revolution in this, in the, I guess in the whole book, in the first part of the book. So when we ended on Monday, we ended with um, the main character kind of telling us her relationship with her religion and with God and how it's changing or it's staying the same because of all that's going on. Um, so that's kind of where we're gonna take off right now on page eight. Do you see this first frame right here? Would anybody like to read page eight? No volunteers. 
I will. Okay, thank you. Are we on our laptop right now? Because um, my laptop is um, charging. Um, I mean, if you want to have the, do you have this up, Kanaya, on your side? Or you're just going to look on with us? I mean, I can see it, but I just want to know if we're writing. We're going to be writing after, when we start the bicycle, the section the bicycle, we're going to be writing. So we're just kind of going to finish this right now, and you don't have to write in this moment. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Salam, go ahead. Every night I had a big discussion with God. God, give me some more time. I am not quite ready yet. Yes, you are, Celestial Light. Celestial Light. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I just woke up. You are, you are my choice, my last and my best choice. Except for my grandmother, I was obviously the only one who believed in myself. What do you want to be when you grow up? I'll be a prophet. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. She's crazy. My parents were called in, were called in by the teacher. Your child is disturbed. She wants to become a prophet. What about it? Doesn't this worry you? No, not at all. Nonetheless, my parents were puzzled. So tell me, my child, what do you want to be when you grow up? A prophet. I want to be a doctor. That's fine, my love. That's fine. I felt guilty towards God. You want to be a doctor, I thought. I thought that. No, no, I will be a prophet, but they mustn't know. I wanted to be justice, love, and the wrath of God all in one. And you can stop right there. Um, okay. I really like this image on in the book. This this image that page nine ends on. I wanted to be justice, love, and the wrath of God all in one. And is this a? Do we think this is a common? What do you think of her wanting to be a prophet as a ten year old? What is a prophet anyway? Think back to like religion. Think back to when you're in church or in a mosque and stories that you've heard. What in your mind is a prophet? Does anyone know? Put it in the chat. Yeah, so we have some in the chat. Um, prophet, somebody who relays the message of God or Allah, a teaching person of a message from God, and um, someone really close to God or Allah. In this case, it could, she's saying God in this case. And she does, she does practice Islam. She's saying God, so her faith is like seems like a combo of a lot of things. Um, would anybody here want to be a prophet? It's kind of a really intense job. And do we have prophets today, like in modern society? Hi, Nakaya. Good morning.
So Salam says not people have to believe on their own. And I think some people consider church leaders or mosque um, leaders to be to be the trusted people, like the messengers between God. Yeah, pastors are, you know, or any in any faith, rabbis, right? People who are directly thought to be directly connected to God. But technically anybody could be connected if you practice enough. So she wanted to be justice, love, and the wrath of God all in one. And so we're seeing that even though there's this war going on, is her faith, how, how is this character's faith being affected? Is it being affected? How do you think it's being affected, Salima? Yeah, her people are kind of worried about her, right? Because she's thinking too much ahead or choosing a route at a young age that not many kids do. And it's a powerful route and they're kind of like, um, somebody said in the chat, the school is worried about her, right? They're like, do you know your daughter is saying that? And what is the parents' responses? Are they worried? Her parents are not, I mean, they're, they're kind of confused, but they, they definitely defend her, right? They're like, oh, what about it? Sure. My kid wants to be a prophet, you know, let her, let her do that. Um, because remember her parents are, they're kind of cool, right? They, they are involved in the protest. They're involved in a new a new society they want they want the world to look different yeah they're activists themselves exactly so she comes from a long line of powerful people and that's we see her we see that in her um so if people can go over to the book journal we are going to write right now um underneath the veil section where you see where it says the veil I want to collect some character traits about her as we're talking about the main character so that we don't forget as we're going through. So we're going to go and we're introducing a word today, which some of you probably, you, you might have heard of it, you might have not, but how many of you have heard of this word? And I'm gonna make it bigger. Yeah, the protagonist, right? The protagonist is the main character of a movie or a book, it could really be anything that's a story. And then the antagonist obviously is usually the opposite of that. And it's more complex sometimes, but the antagonist is a little bit more, I'm thinking of like Disney, Disney. Uh, I don't know why I'm thinking of Ursula from The Little Mermaid, but 
she's kind of a cool antagonist. Um, so the protagonist is the main character and you guys can type this with me. So if you need your laptop now, you should get it. And what do we learn about her in this first section, the veil? How do we describe her? And everyone can put their input in the chat because this will be your participation. So as you're putting it in the chat, I'll add it into our running list of her traits. What do we learn about her? Love that. Strong-minded. What did say? She wants to be profit. She is aware, very young, right? She's only 10. So she's self-aware. At a young age. And again, you guys are typing this on your side because you're going to need this for a writing assignment coming up next week. So make sure you're collecting all of this in your book journal. She's self aware at a young age. Um, she's also really caring and thoughtful. She talks about her grandma a lot and how she notices her grandma is in more pain as she gets older. And that kind of makes her feel, makes her feel like she needs to take care of her more. What else do we learn about her in the very beginning? Anything else? Someone that we haven't heard from in the chat. Morning, Manuel. I'm going to add she has deep faith, right? Deep faith in God. Okay, so we'll probably be adding to this list as we go on each section because we'll learn more about her and her family. But eventually you are going to have to do um we're going to be doing like a character project about her so i do want to in addition to keeping track of what's going on i want to also be looking at the character and how she changes from this moment in history all right so we are going to i'm going to leave this up for a minute so that everybody can get it down and when you're done, just put done in the chat. Also, just so you know, when you're putting this on your book journal, this will count as checkpoint work because all of your notes will be on it. Does that make sense? So when I look at it, I'll see like, the notes or no notes. I don't have the class code. Nakai is done. Awesome. Um, can you guys give me one minute to give someone the class code and then we'll get back into the book.
I'm going to give you the class code in the chat. I just have to go to it. Good morning, Shanice. That's the class code and make sure you're putting in the dash or it won't work. And I'm gonna put these notes. Give me one second to transfer these questions over for the next section. Um, Shanice and Emmanuel, you need your copy of the book open and your book journal open. That's what we're doing right now. Okay. Okay, so we're going to move on to the bicycle section, chapter two, but this isn't broken up into chapters. It's like different names. So if you just came in, you need to be on your book journal, the section, the bicycle, and we are going to scroll down to where it says the bicycle. Kira said, I was dealing with my daughter. I didn't get the first part. Okay, here you go, Kira. I'll give you another minute. These were just the notes that we took on the character in the first part. So you can write them down. Okay, if you didn't get any of the notes, I'll go back to it at the end, but we're gonna move on. So we're on page 10, it says the, the bicycle. Would anyone like to read? Would anyone like to read? If not, I will. Can I read again? Yeah, go ahead. All right. My faith was not unshakable. Today, my name, the year of the revolution, I had to take action, so I put my prophetic destiny aside for a while. Today, my name is Chi Guerva, Guevara. Mm -hmm. I am Fiddle, and I want to be Trotsky. Okay, so we're going to stop right there. So these three, how do we, what do they look like? They look like, like army people? Yeah, like army armed um, revolutionaries, right? So mm -hmm. one of the does any has anybody heard of these names 
Oh yeah, Fiddle. Um, Faye Guevara, Fidel, and Trotsky. Fidel. Has anybody heard of them? Well, obviously they are, we can tell from the picture, they are people who were armed. They were kind of like soldiers. Um, but I want to just get that down of who they, these kids are modeling themselves after. And it's also your first question. So who are Che Guevara, Fidel, Trotsky, and why are they important? So what I want you guys to do right now on your, you could go to Google, you can go to any site on your side. I'm going to give you three minutes. <laughs> and can you paste in the chat what you find out about any of these people? So three minutes. And I'm going to pick Trotsky, but everybody else could do um, Guevara or Fidel. Mm-hmm. Fidel was prime minister of Cuba. And why were they important? That's the second part that you kind of want to look at. How is everybody doing with their with their research? Nice. Salima has um, a Che Guevara um, little bio in there. So does anybody else have any info they want to add in there? Nice. So we're seeing that all of these people are leading different, they're gathering people together, whether it's peasants, whether it's guerrilla warfare, they're gathering people together against the government. So there's, imagine, imagine America right now, right? Um, this would be equivalent to what some people are doing, right? What some people are doing with activism and protesting and 
being very like something is not right with the government. But now imagine if those people actually took over the White House, right? So for example, like if if everybody gathered against Trump and actually overthrew the government. That is what these three people did. They gathered people to literally like get rid of the gov- the existing government. Um, and there's three of the most famous revolutionaries in world history. Um, so what, what do all three of these revolutionaries have in common? What did they do that was the same? Yeah, they united people to overthrow the government. And they formed like different factions and different groups that were able to do that strategically, even though they were all in different countries. And why why is it important to have people like that that will organize a revolution? Do we have people like that today? Who do you think would be a revolutionary today? Or who would we consider? Also, um, you think protesters, okay. Yeah, I think protesting can, you know, is a form of revolution. And I think America is one of, is a country where protesting doesn't go, if you look at other countries, there's a lot of, there's a lot more direct action and overthrow when things are unfair Um, and America keeps it kind of light, I think, when, when the government is, you know, being unfair, they keep it kind of polite or respectable in a way. But if you look at, um, for example, in Mexico City, whenever there, there was a recent um, protest, I think, I think we see a lot more direct action, um, and definitely with guerrilla warfare, which these, these three leaders kind of led, there was a lot of direct action to overthrow the government. Um, so in your book journal, just going over, because This is a question in there. Um, It says, who are Che Guevara, Fidel, Trotsky, and why are they important? Can everybody look at that one? 
you can take some of the facts that are in the chat. There's some good information on these three figures, but ultimately they were revolutionary leaders who formed groups to overthrow government. So take some time to write that down. Take some time to take info out of the chat. Are we ready to move on? Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, Salam, do you still want to read? Sure. Okay. We were right here. Okay. We demonstrated in the garden of our house. Down with the king. Down with the king. The revolution is like a bicycle. When the wheels don't turn, it falls. Well spoken, said one of the people sitting right there. Mm -hmm. Went the revolution in my country. All right, so the revolution is like a bicycle. When the wheels don't turn, it falls. So it always has to, people have to be in like constant movement or it's gonna just pile up. All right, keep going, Salam. All right. Um, after a long sleep of 2,500 years, the revolution has finally awakened the people. 2,500 years of tyranny and submission, as my father said. First our own emperors, then the Arab invasions from the West, followed by the Mongolian invasions from the East. And finally, modern imperialism. All right. So if you look at this image, it's a really beautiful image. Um, Are they praying? Yeah, because this is, well, they're, that's a good question. They could be praying or also bowing to him, right? Mm -hmm. To the king. Because um, remember, this is a country where Islam is the main religion. So it's, it could be either, right? Um, but this is a really good image to understand what Iran went through for 2,500 years, where they were always being invaded by some, by somebody. So eventually you kind of have to rise up um, if that's what you're going through for 2,500 years. Um, go ahead. Oh, um, to enlighten me, they bought books. I knew everything about the children of Palestine, about Fidel Castro, mm -hmm. about the young Vietnamese killed by the Americans, and about the revolutionaries of my country. So these are, um, they, it has the names and their date of birth. Yes. Um, these are all Iranian revolutionaries. So Dr. Fatimi, H. Ashraf, and F. Rizai. All right. But my favorite was a comic book entitled Dialectic Materialism. Mm -hmm. That book, you could see marks in desgrates. Mm -hmm. The material world doesn't exist. It's only a reflection of our own imagination, says you. I heard that before. Authors like talking, yeah. 
You mean that even though you see this stone in my hand, it doesn't exist since it's only in your imagination? Exactly. Ouch. What are you doing, Carl? You'll break my skull. <laughs> it was funny to see how much Marx and God looked like each other, though Marx's hair was a bit curlier. Despite everything, God came to see me from time to time. So you don't want to be a prophet anymore. Let's talk about something else. You think I look like Marx? I told you to talk about something else. Tomorrow the weather is going to be nice. <laughs> Question mark. It will be 75 degrees Fahrenheit in the shade. Shh, wait a second. They burned down the Rex Cinema tonight. Oh my God. The doors had been locked from the outside a few minutes before the fire. The police were there. They forbade people to rescue those locked inside. Then they attack them. Mm. The firemen didn't arrive until 40 minutes later. The BBC said there were 400 victims. The, the shot said that a group of religious fanatics perpetrated the massacre, but the people knew that it was the Shah's fault. All right, so her parents are talking about this thing, this awful tragedy that happened in the movie theater. Um, and what happened? Oh, um, a fire was set and the doors were locked like a couple minutes before. So it was like person day. Yeah, no one could get out. And the king or the Shah was saying, oh, you know, it's kind of, it's a little bit similar to today where the president is like, oh, it's these radical groups, right? That are doing mm -hmm. it. But actually people um, could prove that it was the government that was doing it. And so the government actually did that and made all of those people trapped in the movie theater and committed an act of terrorism. Um, and this picture is really beautiful and kind of haunting. Um, mm -hmm. What do we see in this picture? Because that's actually one of the questions to respond to the imagery on page 15. So, fire. In yeah, there's a fire and like souls. Yeah. It's like, like people floating. that couldn't get out. Um, and so when it says respond to it, like take a moment and just put your, put what you think the picture is and your reaction. This is question two under bicycle on the book journal. And if you, it's right here. What's it put again? What? What's it put there again? Say what that, what's the what again? What's it put there? Oh, what to click in? Um, to get to the book journal, you go to, go to year on the side. And this year, why you can't see it is because you, I need to assign you the project you just joined. Let me just assign it to you. Hold on. Um, so go to checkpoint one Persepolis book journals. Oh, I love that, Shirley. The, the picture looks like the famous green painting, which we'll look at in a second. Persepolis book journal, the world literature blog, and it will look like this. You'll see like a table. And then where we're at right now is the bicycle. It's like the second section. And we're doing question number two. Where it says respond to the picture or imagery on page 15. And this was the picture. Fire. 
from so that harp. What? In our own words, what it look like? Yeah, and also, like, what is your reaction to this picture? And the background to it is that the government trapped 400 people in a movie theater and then set it on fire. Um, and we can, I think, I think things have happened like this throughout history, right? Where buildings are set on fire and people are unfortunate victims inside of them. Um, we had somebody say it looks like their souls are kind of coming out. Um, Shirley, you said it reminds me of the famous screen painting. And those are all okay things to put in your answer. And if you look at the bottom, you'll see like the actual human form trying to get to the door. But then slowly it goes into like these souls. And on your version, we're on page 15. If you're on, if you're following on your page. Excuse me, so I could catch up. Um, when we done this class, could you send me um, the YouTube link directly? Because every I never get it. Like when I ask. Sure. Um, I I will upload it onto the main YouTube page, and I'll send it. I'll send it. I'll make a note to send it to you. Right, probably like five to ten minutes after the class. Okay. Because then that's when it uploads. Okay, and I just want to show you guys that screen painting. The Edward Munch um, screen painting. I'm sure you've seen this if you go to art museums or even just on the internet, right? Um, this is where Shirley said that the spirits kind of reminded her of. It's true. All right. So we can, and to me, it reminds me of like the horror and the tragedy that the government can do to people, right? Even just thinking of the current coronavirus um, and how all of these people are dying and their souls are, it's like they're sometimes they're trapped, right? Or not given justice or not not treated in the right way. Does anyone want to share what they put for number two? Just before we move on, like what was your reaction to this image? And like this one is so, this is like a full skull. No share. Okay. Um, disgraceful. Yeah, disgraceful for sure. That you know that the government would do that to. Sorry, that the government would do that to people. Um, very good. Salam, would you like to continue, or do you want me to pick up reading? Um, I'll take the participation. Okay. All right, so we are... We're on page... So in light... Oh, no, no, no. It says tomorrow there will be another... Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Tomorrow there will be another demonstration. Obviously, we can't let things like that happen. 
I want to go too. Don't you think I look like Che Guevara? <laughs> Maybe I'll be even better as Fidel Castro. Where are you? Are you there? Knock, knock, knock. I want to come with you tomorrow. Where? To demonstrate on the street, I am sick and tired of doing it in the garden. It is very dangerous. They shoot people. For our revolution to succeed, the entire population must support it. You can participate later on. Sure, sure, when it's all over. Mom, please. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're going to bed now. Please, 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 please. God, where are you? That night, he didn't come. All right. So we see her relationship more with her, with her parents, right, at the end. Um, and question number three says, Margie asks, don't you think I look like Che Guevara? What happens next and why? And how does Margie respond? Um, so after she asked that, which is like up here. She's talking to who? Who is she asking that question to? Who's the guy with like the long hair? God. He's kind of always over her shoulder. She called him God, right? Yeah, that's, that's God. She always thinks that God is over her shoulder. So she asks, she says, don't you think I look like all these famous revolutionaries? And what happens to God? He disappeared. Yeah, he goes away. So he doesn't answer her and he goes away. Um, why do you think that God disappears? When she starts talking about joining the protest or the revolution or all of that. Is this for number three? Yes, we're talking about number three. So when she asks that question, God disappears, right? And she looks for him, right? She's like, where, how does she respond? She looks for him everywhere and she kind of gets upset. See, she's just like, I don't think he thought that she should have suggested that she looked like that person. Why do you think like, so totally, it seems like he got upset for some reason. Why would he get upset that she's trying to be a revolutionary or not, maybe not even upset, but like, I don't know. There's something there. <laughs> Cause she keeps saying she wanted, she said she wanted to be a prophet and mm -hmm. that was like going against it. Right. So now she still wants to be powerful, but she wants to be more of like a political leader, no longer right. a real person. Right. Um, so she's kind of like switching up on, on her view and God, she feels like God disappears. Um, so that is for question number three. Yes. God disappears because she's, you know, she's switching up her, her calling. Um, and she gets really upset. And why do you think she wants to join question four? Why do you think she wants to join her parents in the street demonstration? I remember this demonstration is after the movie theater fire happens. People are protesting that that was wrong and that it was disgraceful and all of these things. Why does she say she wants to come with them? Because she feel like um the the um like the movement won't really move far if everybody isn't supporting it right and she actually says a quote there and we're going to put that into the answer like for a revolution to succeed the entire population must support it 
And we could think of that in, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement where the more people you have that come together, um, the more powerful it is. I don't know if it's effective, if we want to argue if it's, if the movement is effective or not, but when you have people who are against it, it kind of like weakens or it, actually it doesn't weaken the movement. I, I shouldn't say that. Um, but yeah, this quote is kind of the reason why she wants to join. So for a revolution to succeed, the entire population must support it. And do any of you have parents or family that reacted how her parents did? Where they were like, no, you can't go because it's too dangerous. That's like sometimes a common response for, from families that have like younger kids where they're like, you can't come with us to protest because it's gonna be dangerous. Um, and that's actually how her parents respond. And so by the end, she's without God and she kind of like, she's without her parents too. So on Monday, what day is it? Well, on Monday, we are going to well, actually, I might actually give this for homework. No, I think we're going to read it together. On Monday, we will, so they, the protests start kind of amping up after this movie theater incident. Um, and so we're going to see a lot of demonstrations and protesting and what becomes of that. So on Monday, we will continue and hope we'll just start right off on Monday reading. Um, and then on Thursday, we're gonna be doing a writing assignment with what we've read so far. And if you guys wanna read ahead, you are more than welcome to. If you have time and you have desire, I welcome that. So yeah. All right, so to close out, what was your favorite part of what we just read today. And you could put it in the chat. So I'm getting, I'm seeing that a lot of you like the images. And that's one of the things that are really good about this, are really engaging, I think, about this book. Um, the images are really beautiful. And when we watch the movie, I think we're going to watch the movie when we're halfway through. So Remember I showed you guys the movie, it has French subtitles. Um, I'm gonna rent it on Amazon Prime and we can start watching it when we're halfway through. And I, th I believe that will be the end of next week. So we'll have a day when we just watch the movie and we talk about the imagery of the, the book and the movie. All right. Um, okay, so I will see you guys on Monday. You don't have any homework for over the time. Just make sure that you have up till the, the water cell. 
make sure you have up until the water cell complete on your book journal. Okay. And I will see you tomorrow for the graduation assembly. All right. Have a great day. Bye everybody. Enjoy your day and be safe. You too. Thank you.